Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, dear conference participants. I am Wen, and there are Lana and Mary. We are so honored to be here to share our project of being pedagogical consultants in the ESL course. Here's our outline. Our speech today will be divided into five parts. First, the background information then students' recommendations. After that, we're going to provide our self-perception change and we'll introduce our achievements and challenges. Finally, we will introduce the final takeaways and answer your questions. First, let me provide some background information. In recent years, many studies reviewed positive outcomes of the student-faculty collaboration, where students play the role of pedagogical consultants. However, such studies seldom involve freshmen. Besides, such studies seldom conducted in the Asian context. In addition, such studies seldom involve feedback from our peers. However, this study involved two Chinese freshmen who also decided to use the feedback of our peers to have a deeper understanding of the instruction process and its outcomes. Now let's give the floor to Mary to provide us with the description of this project. So, so in this longer semester long research project, we observed one section of an ESL or over 320 and had other recorded discussions about the questions and insights gained during the class. Then the semantic analysis suggested by Brown and Clark was used to analyze the audio scripts. Finally, based on the identified themes, we have the focus group interviews during which we interviewed 45 students in three different ESL over group classes, all taught by Professor Lana. The goals of the interview was to allow students to evaluate each of the 19 classroom activities in terms of how effective, moderate, or ineffective it was, and to check whether our suggestions for improvement were well accepted by our peers. So now let's welcome Lana to, to introduce the objectives of our research project. This research project had three major aims. The first one, we wanted to identify uh, the important student recommendations to improve classroom experience. Second, we wanted to see whether there was any change in terms of the participants' self-perception before and after the Finally, we wanted to identify uh, participants' achievements as well as challenges during the partnership. The major outcomes uh, of, the, of this partnership was a list of enhanced classroom activities, uh, and you can see some of them on the slide. Uh, the first two, idioms learning and vocabulary warm up, were selected by my ESL students as the most effective ones. Uh, and the last one, vocabulary teaching, was not among the winners. However, it's still under adjustment, uh, and it will be evaluated by my students this semester. So now let's take a look at the first activity and see how it was different before and after the suggestions from my students. So let's welcome Mary with So initially the idiom teaching of frequent idioms like uh, a show of hands, burn the mid eye oil up in the air occurs at the beginning of the class. The uh, PPP slide with the example sentence definition, picture, and the idiom. And students will learn around 50 idioms, uh, idiomatic expressions per semester. And these idioms are revealed and assessed through apparently in various activities like classroom discussions, public games, um, vocabulary quizzes, and exams. And after we noticed that some students had difficulty, had difficulty understanding on uh, the meaning behind the idiom and the remembering them because of the new variations were usually made, often created dur during the exams, like uh, burn oil at night, show the hands. Therefore, we suggested using more relevant e to idiom pictures to comprehend the idiom's figurative meaning instead of taking it literally. 
And another suggestion was to provide more examples with, uh, of how the expression can be used in the context. So last but not least, we recommend that students can incorporate into formal plays that the students can create themselves and show them in front of our peers. Therefore, the key takeaway of this activity that idioms learn is idioms are significant for students' language learning process, and thus it should be taught explicitly. And our suggestions go in line with Liu and the rest to Julie, who say that idioms should be taught explicitly and because learners tend to interpret idioms literally. And second, we should allow students many opportunities for noticing, including storage and retrieval of the idioms. So now let's welcome Lin to share the second activity, vocal warm-up. Okay, the second activity, vocal warm-up. Initially, students are given short sentences or tongue twisters. For example, I saw a kitten eating chicken in the kitchen to practice with positive features. The instructor would first demonstrate the use of positive features, and after that, students would practice these features with a partner. After that, pedagogical consultants suggested giving students a paragraph to let themselves decide which positive features to use. Therefore, pedagogical consultants see the potential of practicing positive features via this activity, which goes in line with Beckman Institute's finding that positive aspects can communicate much information because how the words and sentences are said is as essential as what is stated. In addition, Gordon and, Al, Gordon and other researchers stated that when students receive specific instructions or annotation or pauses and pay attention to them, they will enhance comprehension of read texts. Therefore, the takeaway for this activity was that Verbal warm-ups that introduce positive features can promote students' first communication confidence and then understanding of texts, and finally, even body language skills. Now let's give the floor to Lana to introduce the third activity. So our third activity was uh, vocabulary teaching, and initially, uh, the matching game for every 10 words was created uh, and those words came from other reading assignments or listening assignments that students uh, completed. So the instructor either chose the words herself or students contributed to uh, the choice. So for every single word, two cards would be created uh, so the students can see uh, the part of speech, uh, the pronunciation, collocations, definition, and the example sentence. And then that matching game sheet would be cut into 20 pieces. So you have 10 words, two cards per each word, so 20 pieces. Um, and then students would play this matching game in, during the class. So thus they would review uh, these words. Um, and then later PDF file would be sent uh, to them so that they can review at home. However, even though I thought this activity was great, However, my uh, pedagogical consultants saw the potential for the change. Uh, first of all, they stated that students did struggle with this activity and they stated, uh, they stated that the visual support is missing. Moreover, students wanted sometimes to translate those words and the L1 uh, translation was missing. Moreover, they told me from secret that students would cram those words during, I mean, be right before the quizzes or before the uh, midterm or final exam. So the first major adjustment was that we included the pictures, the colorful pictures, um, and uh, pedagogical consultants stated that students got more excited about learning the vocabulary. That goes in line with Ribori's finding in 2019 that color can influence mood as well as enhance memory and concentration. So that, that improved the effectiveness of the activity. The next major adjustment was that we included a Quizlet vocabulary game into the instruction. Um, that 
uh, went in line with Raid's finding in 1984 that visual and auditory learning styles prevail in China. So therefore, Quizlet game really meets uh, the needs of students to see and to hear uh, the words. Finally, according to Balance and Jackson, Quizlet is favored by students because it provides the L1 translation. It provides students with some fun and some gamified experience. Moreover, students can easily access the game uh, and um, have a chance for spaced repetition. Finally, they can see the score. Let's say when they, they take a test, they can see where they made a mistake, what they can improve. Therefore, the takeaway, uh, the key takeaway message here is a Quizlet is an effective and practical way to learn vocabulary that is easily accessible. Uh, it is oriented towards students' autonomy. And finally, it, is, it has both audio and uh, visual support. Thus, it can enhance, enhance memory and concentration. So all these three above mentioned activities went through major changes, and that was only because of the pedagogical consultants. So now let's move to the change in our self-perception. So let's like, welcome Mary with her first self-perception change. So I chose a giraffe as the symbol of my feelings at the beginning of being a pedagogical consultant. So as you can see uh, in this picture, uh, the giraffe stands out over the over the grass. And similarly, in this class, I have an opportunity to see and observe the whole educational process, so which is being the same as the giraffe in the picture. Uh, secondly, the giraffe's shape is unique, and it has a uh, long and thin neck, but it has a strong body, so it, it can run fast. Likewise, I want to see my quick development process as being a pedagogical consultant and I can get more information and knowledge uh, than I could not have gained um, otherwise. And the feeling that I have after being a pedagogical consultant are just like hawks. Hawks can observe and catch the prey quickly and easily. And I'm at the stage where I can find advantages and weaknesses um, in the class. And um, I can look for solutions or uh, suggestions for the problems um, in the class. At the end of this project, I learned how to organize the class and arouse students' interest. It helped and taught me how to interact in the class better and find out what information is essential in the class and should be remembered. Finally, it developed the ability of acquiring knowledge actively in the class. So, Lian, what's about you? Well, for my self perception change, firstly, I show a Well, for my self perception change, firstly, I show a panda. As you can see, there's only one panda on this one. It represents that I prefer to do individual work at the beginning. I believe I myself are not good at cooperating with others. So sometimes I would prefer to work by myself. And also, I cannot give many suggestions at, at the beginning of this project. My thoughts are very limited, but also very close to the people. Despite that, I still feel pleasure to be a member of this project. Uh, just like Hannah, Hannah is a treasure in you hear her? Awesome. And I also feel treasure to be a part of this project. However, at the end of the project, I chose a penny bear. Because for me, penny bear is a symbol of self growth. That means that I learn a lot from this project. For example, I learned to give suggestions properly in a cached manner. And also, I was a volunteer teacher in my freshman year, so I learned to improve the process that I teach myself. Lana, what about you? Um, okay. Um, so, in terms of, so as we could see, Lean 
developed from a teddy bear, uh, from a panda to a teddy bear. So in terms of my self-perception change, it changed from an owl. So I associated myself with an owl at the beginning because in my country, in Russia, owls are considered to be very smart and um, uh, wise birds. So I, I, felt, I felt really confident with my teaching abilities and skills. Um, and I was slightly skeptical about this potential benefits from this partnership because of cultural reasons. I felt that students might not necessarily question the authority of the professor and might not have any suggestions for my classroom activities. Moreover, I preferred to work alone and rarely uh, shared my uh, classroom activities with my uh, colleagues. However, just after 15 weeks of instruction, the whole situation uh, changed. I felt like a member of an elephant herd. I felt more cooperative and more vocal. I started sharing what I do in class with my colleagues. Moreover, I could not wait to continue working with my consultants because it was such an invaluable experience. Moreover, I could finally hear the rumbling in the classroom. And by rumbling, I mean the voices of other students. And that was only possible through my consultants. So uh, now let's uh, look at our achievements and challenges. Let's uh, welcome uh, Mary. So now I would, I would like to share with you the reflection on achievements in being a pedagogy consultant. So after being a pedagogy consultant, I realized that, that teaching is not easy. So the majority of classes I attended in the past, uh, I did not consider to be complicated took much effort to the instructors to prepare. Besides, I, as a student, I was able to catch the importance of the content that professors trying to deliver in the class. And second, the various strategies the instructor might have to convey the learning message. To sum up, the experience of being a pedagogy consultant was brilliant. So, however, we also faced with some challenges. When it was close to the end of this semester, it was considerably harder to provide uh, uh, effective suggestions or creative ideas. At the one time, I had to learn more and search online for more good suggestions for this project. So, Lin, what's about your achievements and challenges? Sorry, I have to chime in right now. Two and a half minutes left. Yeah. Making a to-do list each day with the discussion time indicated on my list. Therefore, I get familiar with some activities that I need to do in the whole day, and I became better organized. Lana, what about you? In terms of my achievements and challenges, my biggest achievement was the fact that I could I I didn't expect even to learn that much. Um, firstly. I could indirectly learn from my colleagues and my consultant experiences because they would share what they learn and uh, experience in other classes. For example, Mary went to a workshop on note-taking strategies and then she shared with us. And uh, Lean shared with us uh, on uh, Quizlet. So that was an invaluable experience. Um, moreover, I could see that uh, the confidence was building um, among my uh, pedagogical consultants because I could they would share that they would give suggestions to other professors as well. And that was uh, at first not possible for them. However, the biggest problem with the project was it was overwhelming. I really felt tired, very felt busy. However, the bonus was that my students were re really devoted. Whenever I didn't want to go and meet with them, they're like, let's do it, let's go. So that was a great. So therefore, the final takeaway messages are 
Pedagogical consultant partnership is an excellent example to other classes because such a project plays a vital role in instructions and teaching materials by adjusting existing activities. So, uh, and also it does benefit the professors and students. So therefore, please do consider using the, uh, the pedagogical consultants project in your classroom because that will benefit you and your students. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, these are our references. We are ready for your questions if you have any. Thank you. These are uh, our emails. If you have any questions, please email us. We will be very happy to answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, um, the three of you, yeah. for um, such an enlightening Thanks. presentation. Um, we already have some questions on the panel at the side. Um, okay. Can you access them? If not, I mean, we can ask the participants to turn on their mics and ask us these questions verbally. Yeah. One second. Idioms is important, but idioms can offer cultural biases. Which idioms uh, are then chosen? So we, we chose the idioms that uh, our, um, our colleagues use quite often. So uh, the idioms were like burn the midnight oil or um, show of hands, um, up, in up in the air. So something that's uh, something that so some idioms that uh, usually used among our colleagues so that students can hear them more often um, and thus so they have more uh, opportunities for noticing and uh, using them later on uh, in their own in their own uh, yes learning yes so yeah I guess um, so basically, we were tracking what other colleagues were using and like be on the same page. So something that we use quite often. So that that was. So thank you, Paul, for the question. So if Kahoot would work, um, I wonder Kahoot, Kahoot for for um, for which for for which activity? I wonder, Rita, what do you, would for which activity? We usually use Kahoot for, uh, let's say, reviewing the vocabulary. Um, and again, Kahoot could be used also to review the idioms. So, for the first one. Uh, yeah, so the, it, yeah, that, that was perfect as well. Yeah, we did use that just to, to see whether they can identify the, uh, the linguistic form, how it is written, because again, they would create some interesting forms like burn, Burn night, uh, burn burn oil at night. So instead of burn the midnight oil, or show the hands instead of the show of hands. So that was <laughs> fascinating. Yes, Kahoot definitely. Um, it could it could be applied for <laughs> many things, but idioms, yes, highly recommend it. 